I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines and welcome to my channel. It's foggy, it's wet and we've got a lot of thawing snow around and today I'm out on a new bike and this is because I was going to do some maintenance on my white hybrid and I noticed a crack in the bottom bracket which is a really good job because I've been going 45 miles an hour down some big hills recently. So what can I tell you about this bike? Well, I've had it quite a long time. I'm out on a Kona Cooler, which is an old retro mountain bike. And to be honest, it was in the shed, going rusty and getting seized up. And it hasn't been plain sailing building this bike up. I've had seized parts. I've had to drill parts of the frame out. And with it being a mountain bike, we've got a different bottom bracket standard. And I've also got some really nice comfy bar ends for it which makes the riding position actually quite nice anyway we've got to stay local we are in a lockdown let's give it a go So this project started when I was inspecting the crank set because I knew the teeth had worn out and there's a lot of resistance as the chain turned around onto the teeth. And again looking at the cassette, everything was really dirty after the Rafa Festive 500. So I had a replacement chain set which was the Shimano RS510. It's like a 105 equivalent and with spare parts being difficult to find these days, as soon as I saw this one I snapped it up and even if it was a little bit heavier than the original one that was fitted. So here we are now just taking away the old crank set on the bike. And it was at this point where I noticed the hairline crack in the bottom bracket, which meant for one thing, I had to do a strip down and come up with a solution pretty quickly. And under normal circumstances, this is quite a nice little job to do. However, here I am just taking apart the bike, trying to get the seat post out of the frame. And it was absolutely well and truly seized in. And with it being a carbon seat post, I didn't want to damage it. And my aim was to try and salvage it for the new build. But as you can see here, I'm trying all kinds of methods and different techniques to get it out. I tried to use heat on it. Well, that didn't work. So next, it was time to get the saddle off and then take away the forks from the frame because I was going to have to put this in the vise and use the frame as some leverage against the seat post. I don't like to do this, but when things are well and truly seized in, you need all the help you can get. And leverage was the key here. And so with the forks removed, I used two pieces of wood in the vise to allow me to clamp the carbon seat post into, which would then allow me to use the frame as a lever and twist it whilst everything was clamped up. And again, I kept using heat and tried to spray penetrating oil down inside the frame. But after a lot of persistent twisting, cursing and a fair old bit of elbow grease, eventually the seat post, it did come free, which was a good thing. It meant that I could actually reuse it on the new project. And the next part of the project was to remove the race from the bottom of the fork because the new corner frame had a hope bearing headset. And here we are just preparing the fork for the new hope bearing assembly. And that's the race there that fits onto the steerer tube. And then it was time to fit it into the frame. And everything looked pretty good at this stage. And the original forks that came with the corner were Fox Float suspension forks. And just moving along with the assembly, we're just now fitting the handlebars. And everything was looking pretty good at this stage. Then it was time to remove the old crank set, which was a 3x9 setup. If you look carefully there, it's an SLX triple chain ring. And then the fun really began because the brake caliper bolts had actually seized up into the frame where the eyelets were. 
So this was a pretty delicate situation, and if I got this wrong, the frame would have been totally useless. Well, this was a great little project to work on, and the bike actually cost me nothing, because it was free and it was in the shed. And I actually weighed it, and it came in at 10 kilograms, which is 22 pounds, with this build, which was a blend of mountain bike and road bike components, where I used some Shimano SLX and XT braking and gearing components, alongside road components, such as Ultegra. 105. The seat post and the handlebars were Eastern EC90 and with some Hope components such as the headset and the wheels, it turned out to be a pretty good all-round genuine hybrid bike. And I'm well chuffed with it. It's pretty comfy too. And there was only one final thing to do and that was to get it out on a local good descent and see what it handled like. And I was impressed. Miles an hour, 36 miles an hour, freewheeling, 38 miles an hour, 39, still freewheeling, 40, let's pedal a bit, 42, yeah, I'm going quick now, 44, that's 45, almost 46. But on the next video, I take this new old bike out on a local ride and it was a cracker. It was really cold, lots of ice and snow around and we had the drone. And I went along some local country lanes known as the Turnpike Lanes in West Yorkshire. But if you like these videos, let me know and I'll make some more for you. And thank you for watching. I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines. <laughs>